I'm Davey, and I'm awesome, and welcome to Davey's Awesome Movies, where I review the styles of movies I love, alternative, B-rated, cold flicks, and hopefully you enjoy them. This week, the third installment to the American Ninja series, American Ninja 3, Blood Hunt. This movie was made in 1989, and directed by Cedric Sandstorm, and written by Avi Kleinberger, Gideon Amir, and Gary Conway. And it was released by MGM Studios as well as Canon Pictures. Canon Pictures being a very legendary picture company for those of us who like these kinds of movies. This movie opens in Los Angeles. Which looks nothing like South Africa. And it's during a karate tournament in a small auditorium. Then in the back of a car, we see a General Andreas and the Cobra. I love the names they give to these villains in these movies. And they are discussing a robbery they're about to do. Remember one thing, let's try and do this nice and easy, okay? Without any blood. So, of course, he says no blood, which means when they get there... Why would you rob a karate tournament? They're not that popular. Like, what are you going to get, 300 bucks? I mean, I know in 89, 300 bucks was a lot more than it is nowadays, but still wasn't going to make you rich or anything. While leaving, they encounter a teenage boy, Sean, and attempt to take him as a hostage. Stand back! Don't shoot my son! No! No! Then Sean's dad, who is the karate champion, steps in. Look out! At this point, he was just sitting there. You could have just, like, let them all leave. Bleeding! Yeah, he bit you, but you killed his dad, so call it even? After this, Izumo, Sean's father's trainer, takes Sean with him back to Japan to train him to be a ninja. It's been a long time. Yes, it's incredibly cliche, but at least they got the backstory all covered in three minutes. By the way, I do gotta ask, why in these movies do they always have to take them back to Japan to be a ninja? I mean, I know Japan is where ninjas originated from, but, like, seriously... If you're a ninja and you want to teach a kid to be a ninja, you can do that here. Your training is at last complete, Sean. Now you are a ninja. That's Sean, played by David Bradley. The reason they got David Bradley to be the main character in this one was because Michael Dudikoff Duty! didn't want to be in this one because they were filming in South Africa during apartheid, and he was very, very against it. That, and he said that he was also getting burnt out on martial arts movies for the time. But mostly because they were filming in South Africa. Soon after this, Sean meets this guy. Curtis Jackson. <laughs> That's right. How you doing? Okay, good to see you. That's right. Curtis Jackson's back, baby. Curtis Jackson is out of the military. And the reason he and Sean are on this island is for a karate tournament being held by General Andreas and the Cobra to find the perfect human specimen to experiment on. <laughs> Guess who they picked? Later, while Sean, Curtis, and the bumbling idiot loser character that's always in these movies, Dex, are having drinks with some girls, Sean sees his trainer, Izumo, being taken by ninjas. So he gets up and he follows them to a hotel where Izumo is just sitting on a bed. What are you doing here? Who are those people? What, has he got Alzheimer's? It was a plan to lure in Sean. But not a very good plan. I mean, to get Izumo there, you'd have to fly him all the way out there from Japan and then somehow, you know, start kidnapping him. Like, it really doesn't make any sense. Keep watching. Sean, help me! Sean follows them, but encounters more ninjas. <laughs> that guy is good. <laughs> well, he was. Oh is Izumo in on it? Stay tuned. While chasing them, he doesn't find Izumo, but this happens. Which leads to this. Which makes no sense because you can't hit people that hard under the water. Sean goes to find Curtis and Dex and fill them in on what's going on. I thought Ninja only hung out in Japan. Uh, Curtis Jackson could easily tell you that's not true. Apparently sometimes they're in the Philippines, or the Bahamas, and now on 
this island that I don't want you guys to get involved. Then why did you go tell them? Then back over to the Cobra. How are we doing, my dear? He fell for the Zuma disguise. Okay, that makes more sense. Sort of. Back to the guys. Who the hell are these guys? They're astronauts. What do you think they are? You were just talking about ninjas, you see ninjas, and you're questioning that these are ninjas? The three spread out to fight. <laughs> yeah! Frickin' Jackson! Where's your Zuma? Kill it! It's a little hard to speak when you're being choked, dude. After this, both Sean and Curtis Jackson go to different authorities to try to figure out what's going on. Sean goes to the Minister of Interior and talks to the secretary. Curtis goes to the police. Curtis tells them, though, the fact that he can't get a straight answer out of the police is making him more curious. I wouldn't follow that route if I were you. Oh, this is Curtis Jackson you're talking to, dude. Sean infiltrates the Cobra's lab and sees... <laughs> Why is there always a demonstration where the big boss ninja fights the lower class ninjas to beat the crap out of them? Like, what, to assert your dominance? What are you, dogs? Sean encounters a bunch of ninjas and... <laughs> they finally capture him. After they put him in a cell, though, he gets a visit from Chan Lee. Your life is in terrible danger. Duh! He asks her what's going on. I'm not sure yet. But I'm gonna find out. So she's a good guy? The next day, the Minister of Interior's secretary goes to talk to the Cobra. She basically lets him know that she knows what he's doing is not on the up and up, and is trying to blackmail him to get a very high-paying job with him. Most people would try a resume, but okay. So a ninja with the Cobra's lead scientist, Dr. Holger, chase after the secretary, but after some clever driving, this happens. Yeah! We also see this. She's a master of disguise. Chan finds Curtis and Dex and tells them that she needs their help to free Sean because now her ninjas are no longer loyal to her. Now we got ninjas. Trademark Jackson. Sean is then injected with a virus that the Cobra is planning to use as a weapon. Let's go kick some ass. Jackson! Chan tells them that they need to go to the docks because the Cobra will be trying to transport Sean away from the usual customers. <laughs> yeah! Yes, this leads to Jackson versus Ninja action! <laughs> Jackson versus Ninja. That would have been the perfect name of Jackson's own movie. You so dropped the ball. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> when they reach Sean, General Andreas is waiting. Uh-huh. And no sudden moves. So the others move away. <laughs> well, at least that move wasn't very sudden. <laughs> They tell Sean they gotta get him the antidote quick. Sean says, no, first I gotta find Izumo. Sean. Or you could have just said, Izumo was me. I thought I was doing the right thing. Of course you did, because kidnapping people is always the right thing to do. After this, they have to infiltrate the Cobra's lab again. So Chan disguises herself as the secretary of the Minister of Interior again. Dex asks, how does she do that? Hensu Jitsu. Yes, the ancient art of impersonation. Well, that neatly explains it. Sean tells Dex what to do if the antidote doesn't work. You gotta kill me. What are you saying? Why would he need to do that? If it doesn't work, you'll die, not turn into a vampire. Then again, if Sean turned into a vampire, one, that would have made this movie better, and two, it wouldn't make any less sense than the rest of the movie. And on that note, we've had five American Ninja movies. I think it's time for American Ninja 6. Ninja vampires. Now all of you tell me that wouldn't sound sexy! Chan, disguised as a secretary, now has to fight some ninjas. <laughs> and now they're blue. She finds the antidote, but she's also discovered by the Cobra. I'm not gonna listen to you anymore. You are the snake. Well, his name is the Cobra. Duh! 
Then this happens. Yes, the ninja weakness. Bullets. By the way, where's Jackson? He doesn't need to shoot that machine gun. He's Jackson! Okay, I love you, man, but why would you put the AK down to use a freaking pistol? Jackson is surrounded by ninjas! Freaking Jackson! Now, I wish I could show you this whole scene in its entirety. I can't. You'll just have to go see it for yourself. But I can show you this. Die! When Jackson tells you to stay down or die, you do it! Back to Sean and Dex. <laughs> Two out of three ain't bad. All right, Cobra. Your turn to die. It wasn't his turn before he killed everyone else? Jackson finds Dr. Holger. Where's the lab? Why? Because he's Curtis Jackson. You don't need another reason. Jesus, don't piss me off. I'd listen to him if I were you. He does give Jackson the antidote and tell him where the lab is. <laughs> Jackson. But instead of leaving, he does this. <laughs> Idiot. If Jackson's going to let you leave, leave. <laughs> To be fair, he warned you not to piss him off. Then outside, the entire police department shows up, along with the Minister of the Interior. Not sure why he would accompany them, but okay. Inside, Sean finds Chan. Oh, no. Now, it's your turn, Cobra. Cobra shows up and tells Sean that he is going to get away with it, especially because Sean, in his opinion, has outlived his usefulness. Your mind and soul over your body. Remember that, Sean. Okay, meditation is nice and all, but in these movies, they really need to understand that there is a time and place for it, and it's not right now. So, now something happens that hammers home my point that vampire ninjas would not make any less sense in this movie. Yes, the half-naked dummies all turn into red ninjas. See what I mean? Did he poop himself? You be the judge. Just then, Jackson comes in. Here's the antidote, man. I don't need it anymore. No, he doesn't need it. He just meditated it out of his system. Totally possible. But Cobra's not done. <laughs> Is he done now? I think you're finished. Let's go, pal. And sadly... Jackson was finished too. For some unknown reason, they decided not to include the Curtis Jackson character in the next movie. And sadly, a couple years after that, Steve James, the actor who played Curtis Jackson, passed away from cancer. Rest in peace, Jackson. So there you have it. That's American Ninja 3, Blood Hunt. Definitely not the best in the American Ninja series. The first two were way better. The the second one is the all-around fan favorite. Most people would agree that that is the best one of the series. And this was not really held up as a very good follow-up. In fact, the original creator of the American Ninja series went on record to say he hated this one. But, in my opinion, even though it wasn't the greatest follow-up to American Ninja and American Ninja 2, it was still a sequel worth watching. It had its highlights, it had its good moments, and of course it had its bad storyline that's just ultimately entertaining. And the most important thing is it had Jackson. So on that note, I do recommend that you check out American Ninja 3 Blood Hunt just so you can see all the American Ninja movies, but take it for what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this review as much as I enjoy watching the American Ninja movies. And if you do, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notifications when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think of this review. Tell me what you think of the American Ninja movies. Tell me which American Ninja movie is your favorite. Love you guys.